This morning, we are looking at understanding the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And I'd like for your hearts to be opened for a word from the Lord that will bring you into new realms in the operations of the Spirit in your life. Understanding the ministry of the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 49, Jesus said to them, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The Holy Spirit is given to us for our empowerment. And until you encounter the power of the Holy Spirit, Life will be a mystery. Even Jesus needed the endowment of the Spirit to matter to his generation. That is the creator himself. Now the Holy Spirit is given to us for spiritual empowerment. But there are different dimensions of the Spirit that we must become aware of, connect with, in order to maximize destiny. And we look at a few of these dimensions this morning for the time that we have. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith that empowers believers for exploits. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith that empowers believers for exploits. You have heard it said over and over again that life is a battlefield. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Life is a battlefield. But the good news is that every child of God is redeemed to overcome the battles of life. He said, there had no temptation that has come upon you, but such as is common. For God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. In the same temptation, he will make a way of escape. That way of escape is the Holy Ghost. And how does this happen? By the oppression of the spirit of faith, amongst others. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, the Bible says, He that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. No faith, no victory. In Hebrews chapter 11, beginning from verse 32 to 34, what more then shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises and stopped the mouth of lions. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, we are told above all, taking the shield of faith, we are which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So our victory is not determined by the intensity or the fierceness of the battle. Our victory is determined by our faith. It is not so much about the challenge you are going through. It is not so much about the trial or the temptation. 
It is much more about the operation of your faith. And here these people of God, faith is in different dimensions and different levels. The Bible talks about the word of faith, which teaches you and I the principles of faith. If you like, you can call it the ABC of faith. At another level, higher than that, you have the gift of faith, which empowers you to engage the principles of faith. You can know the principles and not know how it applies to the challenges you are going through. You can know the principles and not know how to engage it. And then at the peak of the school of faith, or the operation of faith, is the spirit of faith. That is the engine room of faith. Just like you cannot drive a car without an engine, you can't operate faith in its fullness without the spirit of faith actively at work in you. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. We also, having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak the same spirit of faith. Your faith will be limited in resolve without the operation of the spirit of faith. There are many things you and I claim to believe that we have not seen happen. Why? Because of the level of faith we are still operating in. The word of faith may be looking for scriptures to quote. The gift of faith may be trying to brood and to search out what scriptures applies in that situation. But the spirit of faith lives out faith inside of you out. And that is why when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were confronted by Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 3, verse 26, they said, O king, we are not careful, verse 16 to 18, sorry, Daniel 3, 16 to 18, O king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Even if he does not deliver us, we will still not bow to your grave enemy. That is not trying to quote Genesis chapter 5 or Revelation chapter 2 or what did God say, what is written or what is not written. No, that is the life of faith oozing forth from your inside. That is what it means to carry the spirit of faith. There are situations and circumstances that you and I may be confronted with that you may not remember any scripture. It is what you carry on your inside that determines the outcome of the contest. That is why you need the spirit of faith. And this spirit is the working of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of faith is a daring spirit. That is the spirit that will not bow to any kind of intimidation. No matter the circumstance, no matter the reports, no matter the event happening around, the spirit of faith is resolute. The spirit of faith, reactionary spirit, it reacts against anything that is contrary to what is provided for you in redemption. Some years ago, the chancellor told us how that many years back, he had someone test him for a check his pressure or something, his blood pressure, and then the person said to him, you have high blood pressure. He said, no, not me. And the man said, no, you can look at the report. It's all here. And he said, no, I didn't say I do not have high blood pressure. I said, I cannot have high blood pressure. Can a man be pregnant with a child? And the man replied, no. He said, so? It is impossible for me to have high blood pressure. That is not James chapter 5. That is not John chapter 1. That is the life of faith oozing forth on your inside. He said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. A standard of faith that cannot be surmounted by the evil one. That is why you need the spirit of faith. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were confronted by Nebuchadnezzar, they didn't, they didn't, they were not intimidated by his status. No. They didn't settle down to begin to think, so how do we respond? No. The life of faith on their inside came out to the forefront. I'm praying for someone here today 
that by these words of faith, receive afresh the gift and the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. One of the most profound characteristics of the spirit of faith is that the spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. What did I call it? Speaking spirit. If you're always quiet when you are challenged, then it is very likely the spirit is not yet in you. No. Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you. We will not. A speaking spirit. We also having the same spirit. We speak. When you are confronted, how are you reacting? If you are not speaking, then it is not there yet. David came to the battlefield in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David continued to speak until he appeared before Goliath. What is it that is, what shall be done to the man that brings down the head of this Goliath? He spoke before the servant, he spoke before King Saul, he spoke before Goliath. And David's conquest began even before he confronted Goliath. What are you saying? The Chancellor, we always say, close mouth is a close destiny. Your victory is in your mouth. Your conquest is in your mouth. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your enemies cannot be able to gain, say, nor resist. But here it is, you can't talk certain things except there is something on your inside. You can't. We cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and which our hands have handled. There, there are certain things that we have encountered that will not allow us to be intimidated or harassed by malaria and typhoid and nonsense sickness. For what? No. And then you sleep in the night, you wake up, and then your whole day just messed up because you had one dream. What? No. No. A lion is a lion even while he is asleep. The spirit never goes to sleep. From the very beginning of creation, we saw the spirit of faith manifest in this dimension. The heart was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit moved upon the face of the waters. And the first thing God did, God said. God said. There, there, there is no miracle Jesus performed in the New Testament that the prophets of old did not perform. Jesus was not the first to raise the dead. Jesus was not the only healer. Elijah raised the dead. Elisha raised the dead. Every other person raised the dead. So what was it about Jesus that the Pharisees and the Sadducees could not comprehend? It was his mouth. He would not keep quiet. The speaking face. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms. It began with their mouth. But until it is inside you, you can't say it. There are a lot of things God has said to you that you have been afraid to say for a long time. You don't believe it enough. You don't see it. So what if I say it and it does not happen? They will laugh at me. And so because they will laugh at me, you won't say it. And because you won't say it, you won't see it. Did God lie? No. What has happened to you? Your faith was not able to carry it. If you believe it, you will say it. If you cannot say it, then you don't believe it. It's either you don't believe it or you don't believe it enough. The spirit of faith does not keep quiet in the face of challenges. Stop keeping quiet. Speak out in faith. Make bold declarations. Caleb and Joshua, they sealed the people. Our God is able to deliver the land into our hands. We are well able to take over the land. The spirit of faith. In the name of Jesus, upon each of us, May the spirit of faith be poured out afresh this morning. Amen. What you cannot say, you cannot see. Your conquest is in your mouth. And for purpose of emphasis, please note that the spirit of faith rides on the wings of revelation. <laughs> the deeper your inside, the wider your mouth will be. The deeper 
your inside. There are deep things that you need to see to be able to say certain strange things. May God give you an eye on usual access this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two is the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of servanthood. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of servanthood. What does that mean? He empowers us for stewardship. Isaiah 42, verse 1 to 4, my elect, in whom I have put my spirit, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Verse 2, he shall not cry, nor lift up his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break. The smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment. Unto the Gentiles, he shall not be discouraged. He shall not fail till he have set judgment in the earth and to the earth which, and the earth shall wait for his law. The spirit of servanthood. That is the spirit that empowers us for continuity in stewardship to the point of enthronement. You are struggling in stewardship. You need the spirit of servanthood and it is accessible. Just engage the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 22, verse 25 to 27, we see the spirit of servanthood actively at work in Jesus. He empowers us for continuity, consistency. You are not hot today, cold tomorrow. You are not fervent today and then nowhere to be found in the next time. No, consistency. That's the same spirit that empowers us for steadfastness. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You want to be steadfast. You want to be consistent. You want to continue in stewardship. You need the spirit of servanthood. Especially when confronted with negative situations. It is easy to say you are serving when all is well. When the table is shaking, how are you responding in stewardship? There are those who title is the reason for which they serve. You take away the title, you will know that they don't have the spirit of servanthood. They just fade out. Take away position, they fade out. And then you are now praying that those who succeeded you, they should fail, so that you can prove that uh, you are the most qualified for the assignment. That is absence of the spirit of servanthood. Philippians chapter 2, beginning from verse 5 to 9, it said, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ. Who though was in the form of God, thought it not equal thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and became obedient took upon himself the form of his servant and became obedient even to the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. The spirit of servanthood. You and I, we need the spirit to be consistent. Number three, the spirit of guidance. The spirit of guidance. And the primary mission of the spirit of guidance is to offer us sound direction in the journey of life. Sound direction. Romans 8 and verse 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sound direction. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to call. Please note that the Holy Spirit is our master guide in the journey of life. He is our master guide. He shows us the way to go. He shows us the steps to take. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. <laughs> Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As long as he is the one leading me, there is no fear. There is no foe. For if God be with you, no man can be against you. The spirit of guidance. John 10, 27. I know my sheep. They know my voice. I hear this. No sheep can outgrow the need for a shepherd. There is no sheep that can outgrow the need for a shepherd. In the same way, you and I cannot outgrow the need for his guidance. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. He is there to guide us. Life without guidance is a risk. We live in times where everyone wants to do things on their own. Everyone wants to be independent. You don't want to be told what to do. You don't want to be told how to do it. You don't want to be told which way to go. We are intelligent. We are smart. We are skillful. But skill is not a substitute for guidance. You can, still, you can be skillful. You can be smart and end up in a crash. Because there is a way that seemed right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of destruction. A story is told of John D. Rockefeller, how that the, the builders of Titanic brought the ship to him to insure. And one of the engineers said to him that this is the safest ship in the world. Now, insuring this ship for you is just giving you free money because there is nothing that can sink this ship. This is the safest. You know, in insurance, you pay premium, nothing happens. The, the company inherits everything. And then he said to them, okay, just give me some time. I'll get back to you. He went on a three days fast to seek the face of God. And God said to him, don't invest. And so he got back to them and told them, God said, I should not invest. And I think the lead engineer or something looked at him and said, even if God, the God who you claim spoke to you, even if God brought the flood of Noah, he can't sink the ship. And he said, thank you very much. And he left. Six months after, God didn't need to bring flood. God is too big. He brought iceberg. His ice block. Don't call it ice block. That's what it is. He just, just one bread. The block just hooked the propeller. And everything came down. The ship, the ship rather, sank. God saw their heart. God saw the pride in them. And God resists the proud. So God knew that this ship, he cannot survive. Not as long as I am God. And you know, God reigns over the affairs of men. If he had insured that ship, most likely his empire would have sunk with the ship. One time, I went visiting someone, one of my friends, and just as I came out of the house, I... I to return back to my base, I had the Holy Spirit say to me, when you get to the bus station, wait for the next turn. I continued. A few meters before the park, I had it again the second time. When you get to the bus park, wait for the next turn. And then I got there. Usually, the only available seats are the ones I wouldn't sit on. On a day that I didn't even say anything to me, I won't sit on those seats. But on this very day, I got there. These are the only seats available. And then the driver came to me and said, no, 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 no. You know me now. In a few minutes, a few hours, I take you to where we are going. You can't go anywhere. Out of sentiments, emotion. I said, okay, no problem. I sat down. And then we took off. We had not driven up to 10 minutes. In fact, I was still typing on my phone to text uh, my fellows that, okay, so we are just about leaving. I know a lot of us do that. Uh, so I'm just leaving now. And then I had the driver slam on the brake. I raised my head, and behold, men with guns and cutlasses. And I shouted, Jesus. And he said, no, this is on you. It is not on me. I told you, when you get to the bus park, wait for the next turn. God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what you don't know. The only way to escape the pits and the traps of the wicked is for you to be guided by him. To be led by God. That is why he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 
two friends, pastors, serving God, fervent in the spirit, and then one of them suddenly died. Young and vibrant. And his friend was angry, mad at everybody, including God. And on the day of the funeral or so, he was returning back from the funeral, still angry and questioning God. I know that this man is fabulous. I know that this man does this. Why would your line die? Blah, blah. And he was doing all of that. The voice of the Lord came to him and said, Pack. He said, No, I will not pack. He came the second time, Pack. He said, No, I will not pack. He continued driving. The third time, according to him, the voice came like thunder. Out of shock, he just swapped off the road. And where he was sitting down, panting, ahead of him was a bridge, a flyover bridge. Before his very eyes, he saw a, is it a container or a truck fall from the bridge and landed on the ground. And he said, Jesus, what is this? And he said, if you had not stopped, that truck would have landed on you. That is the same way I was talking to your friend. He didn't listen to me. There are a lot of things we do that we blame God for. God is not responsible. It's either we are not hearing or we don't even want to hear. Some of us pray, asking God which way to go, what to do, and all of that. But you already have made up your mind what you want. And so no matter what God says, you are not ready to listen. So he's even speaking, you are binding. I reject you. Every spirit that wants to do this in Jesus' name, you will not prevail over me. He said, ah, you can't resist me. That is why we need guide. You need the spirit of guidance. I need the spirit. That is our greatest asset in the journey of life. Now, if you check the exploit of the church, the commission, from whence this institution is battered by the hand of God, the exploit of the living faith church worldwide today is traceable to guidance. Guidance. Would you have us, we, the, the commission was done, and then God's servant, the chancellor, was to go to Joss, and suddenly God told him, do you remember when you were young, you were playing to tennis in so-so and so street? You like Joss. You are the one going to Joss. I'm not the one who sent you there. And then he came back and said, okay, men and brethren, we are no more going to Joss. Holy Spirit said he's not there. I'm the one who is going there, not, not him. So where do we go? Get down to Damascus, the city of persecution, and there he shall be told you what to do. And then he arrived in Kaduna. From Kaduna one morning, arise, get down to Lagos, raise me people. He came to Lagos. While he was in Lagos, they needed a place for the church, got to this place. He didn't like it. It didn't make sense. It was not logical. By all calculation, this is not a place for church. And suddenly God said, this is the place. And he was humble enough to say, okay, men and brethren, even though I've been angry before we got here, God said, this is the place. My anger notwithstanding, this is the place. Has it not become the place today? Now, let me say this to us. If you must be guided, you must be meek. God does not lead the proud. God does not lead the one who already knows what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. In Psalm 25, verse 9, he said, The meek will he teach his ways. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek. Who is a meek person? A person who is correctable who is ready to accept correction. Not the one who says, when my mind is made up, my mind is made up. Even God knows that I don't change my mind when my mind is made up. Nobody has the final say. God is the only one who has the final say. The meek will he teach his way. The meek will he guide his job. If you are not teachable, you cannot be led. God resists the proud. But we give more grace to the humble. Moses, a man who was a commander of the acts of God, a man who saw God face to face. In fact, God said to Miriam and, Miriam and Aaron, he said, if there be a prophet among you, he's not like Moses. The rest of you, I speak to you in dreams. But Moses, I speak to him mouth to mouth, face to face, as a man speaking to his friend. Are you not afraid of Moses? And if you check... The testimony of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10 to 12, he said, there arose not a prophet in Israel like unto Moses. That means before Moses, there was none like Moses. After Moses, there is none like Moses. What is the secret of Moses? Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. He said, Moses, this man Moses, was the meekest. He was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Very meek. You want to be guided? Be in the spirit. 
You cannot access the voice of the spirit in the flesh, be in the spirit. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, I was in the spirit on the last day and I had. Be in the spirit. You cannot walk in the flesh and access the things of the spirit. Be in the spirit. Stop using your mind and your senses to analyze everything. God is not reason able. God is word able. You can't reason things. God is not logical. You can't follow God with logic. In fact, can I tell you this? You can't follow God with your intellect. That is why a lot of intelligent people don't know God. They know about God, but they don't know God. They are two different things. There are a lot of people who know about God. There are professors of theology in universities who, who are not born again. But they teach the Bible. No light. They are in darkness. You see them, you just see darkness. Be in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the ones who will manifest as sons of God. As we close, number four dimension, I just breeze through this. The Holy Spirit strengthens our inner man against the day of battle for victory. The Holy Spirit strengthens our inner man against the day of battle for victory. Ephesians 3, verse 16, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the riches of his glory, will grant you to be strengthened with might in the inner man. Strength in the inner man. In Proverbs 24 and verse 10, he said, if you faint in the day of battle, it is because your strength is small. Your strength is small. The challenges you are complaining about, you need to build capacity to confront them. Build capacity. Build capacity. Fellowshipping in the Holy Ghost. Engage the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our asset. The Holy Ghost is our helper. Everything we need is embedded in the Holy Ghost. If you faint in the day of battle, your strength is small. So the strength to conquer, to conquer temptations, to conquer trials, to conquer addictions, to conquer habits that do not glorify God, to conquer the things that defy and corrupt destiny, that inner strength is in the Holy Ghost. You cannot... Prevail over the battles of life in the energy of the flesh. No. No. It is not by power. It is not by might. But by my spirit. See yes, the Lord. You are confronted, whether financial issues or spiritual issues or whatever issues. You are fainting. is a show that there is no inner strength. There is no inner capacity. Engage the Holy Ghost. Engage the Holy Ghost. Is the spirit that empowers our hearts not to faint or to fail in the day of battle. <laughs> you know what David said to Saul? He said, let no man's heart fail him. The reason why nobody could confront Goliath was because their hearts were failing. But David said, let no man's heart fail. Me, I carry the spirit. Before chapter 17, he was already anointed in chapter 16. And the spirit of God came upon David from that day forward. In the name of Jesus, you and I will fulfill destiny in a grand style. So let us engage the Holy Ghost, maximizing all that the Holy Ghost offers us. But hear this as I close, you cannot Receive the Holy Ghost until you are born again. Jesus is the doorway to the Spirit. You cannot receive the Holy Ghost until you are born again. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel ye not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Until you have an encounter with Christ, you are not born again. That you attend chapel service does not make you born again. That you can even pray does not make you born again. And some of us, we cram other people's tongue. You just patiently listen to them, and then you just repeat after them. Ka, 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 ka.
And then when you are confronted, you try to speak the tongue, and the devil will say, Jesus, I know. Now, the person tongue who you are copying, I think I also know him. You, who are you? <laughs> Rise up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands to heaven, and first let us give him thanks from the depth of our hearts. Let us appreciate him for his word that we have received this morning. Everyone rise up on your feet, lift up your hands to heaven, and appreciate him. Give him glory, give him honor, and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus.